Welcome back guys. I'm actually sitting up today. I'm upright. Yes. This is like a miracle. I've not been able to really sit or drive because of morning sickness in like three weeks. And so I don't know how long this will last, but we're going to take advantage of it mm -hmm. and talk about some of these questions you guys wrote in about emotional boundaries in dating. So like, can we pray together one-on-one -on -one with my boyfriend? How much should I share about my personal life? Should I say mm -hmm. I love you before we get married? Like all these things like this. So we're going to talk about that today. So, welcome back to another episode of Life Advice You Don't Hear in Church. My name is Tiffany Dawn, this is my husband James, mm -hmm. and hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And as always, comment below your perspective on emotional boundaries, because we want to hear from you. I think mm -hmm. my biggest goal today is that you guys would walk away being free to enjoy the relationships God mm -hmm. has put in your life mm -hmm. and let them grow naturally. Mm -hmm. Instead of putting mm -hmm. pressure on them, just let them grow naturally. That's the key, in my opinion, to a healthy life emotionally in dating. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's get right into the questions. Mm -hmm. A lot of you wrote in about topics to talk about when you're dating. Are there certain topics that are off limits? One of you wrote, how much of my past hurt should I share in the dating phase? Another said, how far into dating do you ask the big questions about like finances and children and theological beliefs? Mm -hmm. I don't want to scare them away too soon. My personal opinion is that when you're just going on dates with someone, you predominantly just keep it positive. In other words, until you relate your officially boyfriend and girlfriend, I don't know that you really need to delve very deeply into really anything in your past. I think sometimes in Christian relationships, there's this pressure because we're so focused on, could I marry this person? There's all this pressure like on the first date or two to just spill your guts. Like he's gotta know everything so that if he doesn't want me, I can walk away now. But the thing is like, that's not a healthy approach. Mm -hmm. First off, it creates a false sense of intimacy where you feel like super connected to this person and committed even though that commitment is not there yet. And also like, you don't know this person. Mm -hmm. And like, if you just mm -hmm. throw all your baggage at someone without them knowing you and you knowing them, like, that's not fair to either yeah. of you. Yeah, absolutely. You need to find out if this person is worthy of your trust. And then once your relationship gets to be more official, then you can start to almost pull back the curtain and be like, yeah, we have this incredible connection, but this is also who I am. I also mm -hmm. have anxiety or I also r wrestle with, you know, an addiction to food. And it doesn't have to be all at once. Mm -hmm. like, it shouldn't be all at once. Yeah, you just little things at a time to see mm -hmm. if they're worthy of your trust. Like there's a big difference between being honest, which mm -hmm. is super important, and being open about everything. Right. So in other words, if it comes up, hey, if you date ever dated anyone before, and you have, you wouldn't want to say no. Uh -huh. You want to be truthful. You want to say, yes, I have. But do you need to, at that moment, get into, yes, you know, the last person I dated was actually abusive and I was sexually assaulted. No, you don't, you don't need, to need to share, share all that. Right that. Away. You yeah. don't need to share all of the details. You can share it in bits, in pieces, right. in layers. I, I would say once you start talking about getting married, at that point, pretty much any topic is fair game. Yeah. Because you're saying, all right, we have this awesome relationship. Let's start talking about it. This is something that really could be long-term. You want to do that and before you get engaged. Yes. Like you're talking about yes. marriage, but you're not engaged yeah. yet. So yeah. you're talking about children. You're talking about Finances. money. You're talking yeah. about geography. You're talking about life goals and dreams as you Past see them now. trauma, everything. Yeah, you're talking uh -huh. about the kind of church you want to go to. Mm -hmm. um, and you're talking about, I cannot stand, you know, the way you handle money, the yeah. way you leave your room, you know, uh -huh. the fact that you, you know, leave your dishes in the sink for three days, you mm -hmm. know, those are things you have to start working through. And that doesn't mean that they all need to be resolved by the time you get engaged or even by the time you get married. but those things need to be on the table. So our next question comes from Emily. What is your opinion about praying together or studying the Bible one-on-one? -on -one? I've heard many voices telling us it's okay to do it in a group, but not alone with your boyfriend and girlfriend. It might be very hard in case you split up. I guess this isn't something I ever thought about when we were dating. Yeah, you know, I've been thinking a lot about this. You know, can we pray together while we're dating or engaged? And I think you definitely can. There's yeah. nothing that's, def that's distinctly wrong about it. But if it were me, I don't think I would. And I can't quite put my finger on why, mm -hmm. but at least to me, it always it strikes me as kind of an odd thing to do with someone that you're right. trying to figure out, hey, is this someone I want to spend the rest of my life with? Yeah. It I seems like more of something you do that when you're like, we're spending the rest of our life together. And I think sometimes we prayed together. Like when we were working through something hard, we prayed together about that. Yes. But it wasn't like, a habit. Mm -hmm. When we got engaged, we prayed together more. Now that we're married, we pray together every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. It's just been like a slow growth, natural process. Yeah. 
but it wasn't something that I was like not doing because I shouldn't. It, it just was something I like didn't really, it wasn't mm -hmm. like a natural mm -hmm. expression of myself. To yeah. Be like, Let's pray together mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, and I guess, I guess I might be a little concerned that if you're saying, oh yeah, we're gonna have boyfriend and girlfriend Bible study every week, right. it just seems to be a little, a little too much. Like with other people there, I guess that's a little oh, yeah, different. Yeah, that could be great. But it's yeah. like, why, why just the two of you? Like, why, especially if you don't have other people that you're in Bible mm -hmm. studies with. Like, why just, why just the two of you? Yeah, we'd be very interested in your thoughts. Yeah, on this comment below. What do you guys think about this? Here's a great question from Joy. How much say should your boyfriend or girlfriend have in your life? Oh. My boyfriend and I have been dating for two years now and are planning to be married soon. Is it all right for me to kindly suggest he change something about his lifestyle or habits? How can I do so without being controlling or hurtful? Oh, that's really good. Yeah, I think it's so important to have conversations as you're getting in a really serious relationship. I mean, it's not like something you do in the first part of your relationship, but as you get serious, like mm -hmm. it's so important to have conversations. If there's something in his life that you're like concerned about or that, you know, it's really bothering you, you want to set a precedent of talking about those things. Mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. want to set a precedent of you guys mm -hmm. just sitting back and not mm -hmm. saying anything because that mm -hmm. leads to bitterness mm -hmm. in marriage. Mm -hmm. And you do it kindly and you use I language instead of you language instead mm -hmm. of you make me mad when you show up late. It's like, I feel really hurt when you show up late because this is how it makes me feel. Mm -hmm. So you're doing it mm -hmm. in I language, you're making it about mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and you're doing it in a space that's like not confrontational. That's mm -hmm. not in the middle mm -hmm. of a crowd. There's not other mm -hmm. people around. Not in front of family, not in right. front of friends, one-on-one. -on -one. And kind of talk it through. And there might be something going on with him that helps you understand where he's coming from better. Mm -hmm. It might be that you guys realize, yeah, this really needs to change. But mm -hmm. um, it's important to set the precedent for talking about those things and talking about them in a healthy way. And we have a video all about how to handle those conversations called How to Handle Conflict. And it's linked in the description if you want to check that out. Alexandra says, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on saying, I love you. Mm. I'm in the mind, it's it's beautifully okay to say this when met in the context of friendship, including dating, but that otherwise this should be reserved for engagement, at the very least, if not after marriage, for wisdom's sake, in order to guard one's heart and not awaken love before its time. I think we both came into our relationship looking at this different ways. Yeah. I had said I love you to boyfriends in the past. James had never said I love oh, you no. to a girlfriend. No, this was a big deal for me. I think, I don't even know, I think it was one of my college friends and I, we were like, yeah, we're not gonna say I love you till we like know it's the one. We're only gonna say I love you to one person. And so for me, it was like, well, do I love her? Don't I love her? I don't know. I don't know if I should say it. I remember when yeah. he finally did, he like was brushing his teeth. Yes. And you like, had totally tears in your eyes. I was so special. Yeah. But like, I think at the same time, like, I don't think that's necessary. I mean, yeah, you don't wanna just be like, I love you, I love you, babe, to like everybody. But if you're in a serious relationship with somebody, the fact is you're in that relationship because you do love them. And there's mm -hmm. different meanings and levels to the word love. And mm -hmm. you know, like that embodies like, I'm here for you, I'm with you. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be something you only say to the person you marry. Mm -hmm. And if that's something that you have a personal preference, like you wanna do that, then that's fine. But I have also seen that really hurt couples. I have a friend who was in a serious relationship for two years. The guy never said, I love you. And she just felt that was one of the reasons that they ended up breaking up because she felt like, I need to hear that. Like, I need to hear that as a woman. So I think some guys yeah. were just a little like legalistic about the words I love. Yeah, you. I agree. I agree. I think especially if you're in like a, ser a, a more serious relationship and you're not saying I love you, I think you need to talk about that. Yeah. And I think a, a healthy relationship, you're going to be able to say, yeah, you know, I haven't said that because of this or that. Mm -hmm. And the person can say, oh, wow, you know, I, I appreciate you explaining that. Right. And it's really helpful for me to understand where you're coming from. Conversely, you should not at all feel bad if you've said I love you to someone that you've broken up with or that mm -hmm. broke up with you. That's okay. And people say, well, I didn't really love them. That's not true. The fact that you can love someone even if it doesn't work out. Like mm -hmm. love is a much bigger definition than just mm -hmm. I'm gonna marry you. Yes, don't equate saying I love you with we're getting married forever. Exactly. Okay, Natalia asks, how should jealousy be acted upon while dating? Sometimes my boyfriend talks or texts with other girls and occasionally goes out to eat with one of them. I want to trust him and I know he views them only as friends, but at the same time it makes me jealous that he'd want to spend time with another girl. How should I handle this? 
Oh my gosh, I so relate to this question. This one hits closely to home. This this was an issue for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by the way, we have a whole video about how we walk, work through this. Link yes. down below. Mm -hmm. So I think it's so important, if you're feeling that way, you have to talk to your boyfriend about it. Yeah. And say, hey, I know that you're doing this. I know that you're doing that. I need to tell you how I feel. Again, like Tiffany said, use the I feel language. Don't mm -hmm. say, well, you are being a bad person. No, say, this is how I feel. Mm -hmm. And then you allow your boyfriend time to process because chances are he has not considered this at all. This is a totally <laughs> new perspective. This is how it was for me. Yeah. And he needs some time to think about it and process it and then you guys can discuss it. So I would say, my answer is, open up the discussion. Yeah. I was like, well, Tiffany, what I'm doing is not wrong, you know, because I did want to have, you know, a big thing was like going to going to lunch with friends yeah. that were girls. Like it wasn't something I did often, but I was like, well, I'm not wrong when I do that, but. Don't tell me I can't do this. Yes, yeah. uh -huh. yes, I really didn't like that. But I think what I realized is when I did that without talking to Tiffany first, it really did, was really hurtful to her. Mm -hmm. And I had to ask myself, do I want to stick up for my freedom? Or do I want to honor the woman I love? And I think for me, on the flip side, I needed to hear it from his perspective and understand like this wasn't about him not loving me. And I needed to work mm -hmm. through some of that with counseling too. Like for me, I was like, mm -hmm. why would he even want other friends that are girls? Like, am I not good enough? You know, I had this mm -hmm. very extreme mm -hmm. response. Mm -hmm. And so I started going to counseling around that time and worked through a lot of that and realized how much of that came from my own past and baggage as opposed to reality. And so it's kind of like finding that balance, mm -hmm. but both seeking to understand where the other's coming from mm -hmm. and work mm -hmm. through it together. So. Mm -hmm. It'll look different. The resolution will look different for every couple, and that's okay. And mm -hmm. how you can work through that will show you a lot and tell you a lot about your relationship. That is 100% true. Okay, so we're gonna end it here. Um, thank you for these amazing questions, and we will see you again next week. Hopefully, I will be upright. Bye, guys.